Speaker, Magal Cahirlig. Um, thank you for the invitation to attend the committee today in regard to the reopening of our school sector. I'm accompanied today by Assistant Secretaries Deirdre Shanley, Aoife Conduit and Dalton Tatton, Chief Inspector Harold Hislop, Deputy Chief Inspector Yvonne Keating, Director of NEPS and Tanzi, and Eamon Murta, Director in the Planning and Building Unit. Although this is my first appearance before the committee, I have been following the work of the committee and acknowledge the energy and commitment that has gone into its sessions to date as the responses to COVID-19 across government, the state delivery services and other sectors of our society have been discussed here. As deputies know, the reopening of our schools was, since my appointment, and continues to be a number one priority. It was not a hope, as some would have characterised it, but rather a reasonable ambition which, like all ambitions, presented a series of challenges for us to address in order to realise it. I have been fully supported by government in putting in place the supports necessary to realise the ambition, and in recent days, and into this week too, we have seen that ambition being realised. Deputies will also be aware of the announcement I made yesterday on calculated grades, which followed a government decision on proposals I put forward to amend the national standardisation process within the calculated grades model. Under the calculated grades model, estimated marks from schools will be adjusted as planned to ensure that a consistent standard is applied across schools throughout the country when judging the performance of students. The change I introduced removes the use of school-by-school -school historical data in the standardisation model and places a greater emphasis on the estimated marks provided by schools to individual students. In making this change, I was driven by the desire to ensure fairness in the process, fairness for the students. Our decisions provide additional reassurances to Leaving Certificate 2020 students that their unique situation has been understood and treated fairly. Fairness must be at the heart of everything we do as a society. From my first day as Minister for Education, I have been determined that in this extraordinary year, the system in place to mark students' achievements of their years in post-primary education would be the fairest possible system under these challenging safeguards. Cabinet approved the roadmap for the full return to, sco uh, to schools in July, which sets out how the public health advice provided to my department on the safe return to school could be implemented at individual school level. Approval was given for over £375 million in additional funding necessary to support the implementation. I provided details of the supports being made available to both houses of the Oireachtas during that last week of July, and the effect of those supports has been seen across the country as schools reopened their doors from last week. During August, I provided a number of updates on how the planning for schools reopening was progressing. To date, the payments made directly to schools exceed €116 million. Euro. My department brought forward the payment of the annual minor works grant to primary schools totalling approximately 30 million, which typically is paid in either December or January uh, each year. In addition, an enhanced minor work grant which matches the 2019 payment also has been issued directly to schools. This amounts to 60 million, which has now been issued directly to primary schools in minor works grants since the publication of the roadmap, and a minor works grant amounting to 42 million issued to post-primary schools in the free scheme. The Minor Works Grant provides schools with the necessary flexibility to implement necessary physical measures in their school quickly to enable the full school reopening. These measures include, but are not limited to, reconfiguration of classroom space, repurposing rooms to provide additional space, purchasing furniture, altering desk layouts and the short-term rental of additional space. Given that each school setting is different, individual schools are best placed to decide on the appropriate reconfiguration measures for their school which are necessary to facilitate school reopening. The roadmap was developed following intensive engagement with stakeholders from the education se sector, including staff unions, representatives of principals and deputy principals, school management bodies and representatives of parents and post-primary students. This cooperation and collaboration has continued, including at a local level, where school communities have worked together to best address their local circumstances. Yesterday, officials met with the primary and post-primary stakeholders again to maintain the spirit of partnership regarding reopening. There was also a meeting of the advisory group and the state examinations yesterday, emphasising the continued cooperation in this area. I wish to take this opportunity to acknowledge the unstinting and selfless efforts of school communities across the country over the last number of weeks and months to do all that is necessary to reopen our schools. 
We owe an enormous debt of gratitude to all of them for their generosity of spirit, a reflection of their absolute dedication to their students and the provision of education for all. The roadmap and its accompanying documentation provided schools with guidance and training, checklists for schools in preparing for reopening and guidance for operating the school safety in a COVID-19 context. Template COVID-19 response plans for schools were also provided to schools. These plans provide clear and practical guidance and support to schools on the range of measures that need to be put in place to bring everyone back to school safely. The Department has produced age-appropriate guidance for students in the form of animated videos, which are intended to help students further understand some of the new routines when they return to school. Guidance is also available for parents uh, and indeed will be available in several languages. These animations are available at gov.ie uh, forward slash back to school and also issued to schools to be disseminated to parents. The HSE's Health Protection Surveillance Centre has confirmed that all recommendations in the public health advice I published at the beginning of July, including physical distancing guidelines as set out in the roadmap, still apply in all schools, with the exception of the recommendations uh, on face coverings, which has been updated to reflect the latest research and expertise. Teachers and post-primary school students should wear face coverings similar to those worn in shops or on public transport. Guidance for parents and guardians and families on the return to school is also available on gov.ie. Parents and guardians can direct specific queries to their schools. A letter was issued to all schools last week together with a HSE document titled Schools Pathway for COVID-19, the Public Health Approach, setting out the approach to managing isolated confirmed cases of COVID-19 within the school community, and also the principles that will underpin the management of outbreaks or potential outbreaks and the aligned testing strategy within an educational facility. It is important to note that the response to confirmed cases or outbreaks of COVID-19 in the community or in a school is the responsibility of and will be led and managed by Public Health HSC. All decisions to the appropriate actions following a confirmed case or outbreak will be made by their teams in the context of a full public health risk assessment. Procedure, uh, uh, public health assessment procedure according to the principles set out in the document. Any actions to be taken by the school will be communicated directly by Public Health HSC. School management will be informed as and when such actions, such as exclusion of children or staff, partial or full closure, are deemed necessary on public health grounds. If the school is not so informed, it has not been deemed necessary by Public Health. Children will continue to display symptoms of many other circulating respiratory viruses. It is known that young children often have a persistent cold. A child with a blocked or runny nose, but no fever, can attend school. But if they require paracetamol or ibuprofen, they must stay at home for 48 hours and parents or guardians should contact the GP to assess whether a test is required. Students and staff who have symptoms of COVID-19, including fever, new cough, shortness of breath, breathing difficulties, or loss or change to their sense of smell or taste, should not attend school. The definition of close contacts within the school will be variable and determined by a risk assessment that will take account of individual factors within each school or class. It will not be automatically assumed that a whole class will be deemed as close contacts. Close contacts will be directly notified by the HSC and advised to restrict their movements and present for testing on a day zero and day seven. Close contacts will restrict their movements for 14 days, even in the event that COVID-19 is not detected in both of these tests. There is no blanket policy to test entire classes or years. The testing strategy will be aligned to the public health risk assessment, which may recommend widespread swabbing within a class or school under HSE mass testing procedures. In the event of an outbreak, public health will determine between a range of possible interventions from exclusion and testing of a small group or pod of pupils up to and including closure of an affected facility. All schools are required to have a summary of key information to assist public health in their public health risk assessment ready to be provided on request. Outside the school environment, everyone should follow the latest public health measures announced on the, 8th of, uh, sorry, the 18th of August, which are also available on gov.ie. I know the issue of school transport is an area of considerable interest to deputies and it is a massive daily logistical undertaking. 
recently received updated. Thank you, Minister. Uh, if you could conclude, please. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, updated uh, health advice from NEFET impacts on the operation of post primary school transport services. Government decided that the arrangements made for primary school transport scheme will proceed as planned when schools reopen, and these services will operate fully with additional measures in place, such as pre assigned seating and additional hygiene and cleaning measures on these services. The post primary scheme has also commenced operation with additional measures in place, such as pre assigned seating and already, as I have outlined. In line with the new requirements of public transport, which is using a 50% capacity of uh, passenger capacity on the post-primary okay, services, thank you very much, the Department is rolling out that facility. Thank you, Minister.